I am honored to be part of this historic 200th program of the ITC, a unique nonprofit and independent organization that has continuously been presenting and transmitting globally via technology important global topics since 1984. I would dare say that our topic today of global water and energy ranks among the most important and relevant it has addressed. These two strategic resources are essential elements of our productive, economic, and social systems. The first ever computer-based global water model was created and implemented around the world in 1972, in fact, by the founder and executive director of ITC, Dr. Miguel A. Cardenas, as part of the well-known project, Mankind at the Turning Point, funded by the Club of Rome. The first global energy and food models were also developed by the team of expert of this project based at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio, and the Technical University of Hanover in Germany. The simulations, projections, and future scenarios provided by these global models were first presented in 1974 at a summit of world leaders in Salzburg, Austria, which was attended by more than a hundred heads of state. This was the first concerted international effort to promote a global conscience and responsibility for the limits of the planet and the choices mankind would have to make as an increasingly globalized society. Sustainability and a greater consciousness towards our natural resources were the underlying messages in these pioneering efforts in the 1970s. The ITC continued in 1984 these efforts with its unique video conference program, promoting global knowledge and global competencies a field of study and practice increasingly recognized by academics, leaders, entrepreneurs, governments, and corporate groups around the world. Responsibility and consciousness are two very strong and deep human concepts. Let's explore consciousness and how the way we tend to know or acquire knowledge has affected how and what we know, and how the how we know divorces us from self-reflection and our deeper, deeper mental connection with the essential elements in our environment, such as water and energy, their use and creation. This exercise will lead us to see how our confusion as to what consciousness is has thwarted personal and collective development and has affected the quality and meaningfulness of our lives with family, work, and society, and our relationship to the natural environment and its key elements that include water and energy. Some of the questions that frequently trouble me are, why do we continually make the same historical mistakes as individuals, organizations, and communities? What is it that hinders our development of consciousness? Why do we continually ignore the environment and people's way of living for our own personal gain or selfish goals? What is it that prevents us from behaving ourselves and others as a unity at work or in society? A unity as self and a unity with our natural environment. We know efficient water and energy use are crucial 
to our well-being, given their fragile nature. Yet, we don't consciously make decisions to protect them unless someone reminds us about it. Part of the answer to these existential questions lies in our reductionist and positivistic method of knowing and thinking. That is, we use the scientific practice, the so-called scientific method, as our paradigm for gaining knowledge. A way of knowing that says knowledge is, like a commodity, an object outside of ourselves. A way of knowing that is divorced from our own inner knowing and reasoning. It is knowledge without reason. It is a way of knowing that divorces us from our psyche. In being separated from our psyche, we are divorced from being able to see the psyche as a door to the deeper meaning that resides in symbols and images. Images such as water being not just a natural resource, but a symbol embodying life-giving cleansing, a symbol that connects our self to the higher self, the self that is beyond ego. Positivistic knowing eliminates knowing that is self-reflective. It is reductionist and, in addition to alienating us from our psyche, it excludes our inner awareness, our intuition, our emotional intelligence, and our physical sense. In short, this form of knowing divorces us from our inner way of reasoning. More specifically, since the Enlightenment, knowing has been reduced to how we know the method, rather than the experience of knowing through our own reasoning, which includes our rational capacities. Knowing through our own reasoning is a way of reasoning that is emancipatory in that it releases us from a method of knowing that is reductionist, positivistic, limited, and divisive in nature. The reductionist and objectivated form of knowing I'm critiquing creates in individuals and our culture an individualistic and dualistic frame through which we see, know, act, decide, and bring meaning to us in our environment. The individualistic way of knowing and framing the world is reinforced by the philosophical groundings of both materialism and empiricism that not only frame how we see the world, but act as laws which are not only independent of the will, consciousness, and intention of man, but much rather the inverse. They determine man's desires, consciousness, and intention. This type of knowing and rationality, devoid of inner reasoning, separates us from our full rationality, awareness of the present. As a result, this type of reasoning prevents us from breaking through to different levels of consciousness. It is a logical, linear thinking that prevents us from experiencing consciousness as what I call presence consciousness. A rationality grounded on the logical linear method of knowing that locks us 
into a consciousness understood as being defined by outside objects, that is, a consciousness of. This type of positivistic thinking is dualistic and reinforces an isolationist, right-wrong, yes-no, either-or, closed perspective of the world and decision-making. Dualistic thinking divorces us from the present moment. The positivistic dualistic thinking from of knowing locks us into conventional positivistic social and economic models. Models such as the neoclassical economic model that is responsible for much of our current environmental crisis due to its individualistic purview that, in service to individual desires and profit, ignores the biophysical context that takes the natural environment into account. By remaining dualistic in our thought patterns and in how we see the world, we cannot think or respond beyond conventionality. Viewing consciousness as consciousness of is equated with the scientific method of knowing it is knowing only through one's individualistic and dualistic perspective. To move from experiencing consciousness as consciousness of to what I call present consciousness, we need to come to an integration of multiple perspectives, which is not possible if knowledge is not mediated through a radical sacrifice of perspectives. Keegan's and Graves' description of the first three orders of consciousness, namely personal survival, egocentricity, and absolutism, demonstrate the determined philosophical laws and ways of knowing that codify understanding of nature in an ideological way. By continuing to use the positivistic ideological method as the primary frame we use in accessing and distributing the natural resources of our planet, we, our conventional way of knowing and resultant shape of consciousness reinforces our misconception that our society, human history, and our environment are all stagnant. Maintaining this mis misconception in how we know, how we interact with, how we use the resources of our planet perpetuates the myth that our practices are sustainable and that our planet will continually support our current way of life. The incapacity to see that we are repeating patterns of history is fostered by the positivistic method. This blindness locks us into behaviors and decisions that conceal from us that we continue to replicate the mistakes of the colonizers and that the reductionist method and resultant consciousness continues to reinforce our past decisions. So how do we release ourselves from this seemingly never-ending pattern of limited consciousness reinforced by educational, political, and business practices? that are divisive, destructive, environmentally unsound, and individualistic in nature. Moving from a consciousness of to presence consciousness involves recognizing and practicing different ways of knowing, coupled with higher order practices, such as mindfulness and meditation 
that release us from being limited by our ego's need to have control over others, whether that control be economically, socially, or environmentally. While I've argued here that we must move beyond simply knowing through the positivistic and scientific lens, this does not suggest that there is not knowledge to be gleaned from the sciences, especially concerning our environment. It is through integrating our different ways of knowing, including use of the scientific model, that will be brought to greater insight into how we solve our environmental dilemmas. We have a responsibility to draw upon methods and theories that bring to praxis behaviors that will reinforce levels of consciousness that I mentioned above. For example, through practicing 21st century leadership behaviors where leadership is an influence relationship among collaborator, collaborators in shared networks who intend real changes that reflect mutual purposes. This approach is essential in the water and inner energy industries which require constant innovation, technology development, global knowledge, multicultural competence, and a holistic and systemic view towards the environmental from where they originate and inevitab inevitably return. We currently have multiple innovations and are developing new technologies in water treatment, purification, desalinization, solar and wind systems, energy conservation and production that can meet the explosive global and national demands for residential, business, government, and the needs of civil society. But it is important to realize that the release of the positivistic model as the primary method of knowing, implementation of new business models and new technologies is not enough to regenerate our environment while providing better living conditions and higher quality of life. By using mindfulness and meditation as the space in which we incorporate the above-mentioned higher order values, along with new technologies and business methods, we will have a much better chance of solving our current environmental and social issues and of more responsibly coexisting with our water and energy around the world. These resources have renewable dimensions such as geothermal water and solar and wind energy, as well as non-renewable dimensions illustrated by the global water and energy cycles we interact with every second of our lives. Knowing and mindfully acting with the conscious intent of in enhancing the quality of life throughout our planet will bring us much closer to moving beyond sustainability to practices that regenerate our social and ecological environments. In particular, I hope this presentation today has made you more conscious and committed to the need to change our traditional mindset towards water and energy, not just as resources to consume as commodities, but rather as generators of both economic and social value viewed as part 
of a natural environment that we must all protect to ensure the survival of our future generations. Thank you.